Whispers from Below, a horror podcast by Justin W. Geis. Scary stories, both real and fake. Hello, listeners. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 5 of Whispers from Below, a podcast by a madman for madmen. I'm your resident psychopath, Justin W. Geis, and today's topic of discussion is... Clown stories. Uh, Just to start this off, these are all real stories. These are all things that actually happened. Last week I did sort of like a like a fantasy, you know, it was like a story, so I wanted to do something that was still story-related, but was a little more uh, real. These are all real things that have happened in the world. Um, Before I get into the episode, I just want to mention a couple things. I know I said that I was going to continue doing my uh, quarantine, I I guess it was like a quarantine bonus episode. Um, Those bonus episodes are not going to be every single week. Um, I get a little burnt out if I'm trying to record and edit and earn money another way and do this and do that. And like, there's just a lot going on right now. Um, and for my mental brain, uh, I just can't do two episodes a week. So that Thursday at 8 a.m. slot, um, I will let, uh, you guys know on social media if that episode is going to be going up at all. I know it didn't go up this past week. Um, I had a little bit of a, a weird week here, um, if I'm feeling up to it and I feel like I want to record another episode and I want to get more content out for you guys, um, I'll definitely post it and then I'll let you guys know on social media that there's going to be a bonus episode going up. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to be sticking to just my once a week on Monday, my uh, usual schedule. So Mondays at 8 a.m. Uh, to keep updated on the sort of schedule and when things are going up and what's going on, um, you can follow. I normally plug this at the end, but I might as well do it now. Um, you can follow uh whispers from below on instagram um there's no spaces no capitals no underscores no nothing um and if you have any questions for me um or you have any ideas for future episodes you can shoot me an email it's the same thing at gmail.com um so without further ado let's get into the episode um so again like i said before these are all real cases i have five it's episode five so i wanted to do a five story episode that was the point it was episode five it's it's five the theme is five. That, that that was the point of this week's episode. Um, <laughs> so I uh, preface, first of all, uh, you can ask anyone I know, I hate clowns. I hate clowns so much. I hate them so much. They are so scary to me. They're terrifying. I don't know why anyone feels a need to sort of like dress up as one or have one around or like people are like I love clowns I think they're cute and they're so fun and it's like no they're not like I know like two people in my life that are like clowns are great and I love them and it's like my dad who uses it to like mentally scar me and like my brother who uses it to like mentally scar me and he doesn't even like clowns he just uses it as a way to scare me so I think the main thing here to take away is that clowns are only good for scaring people Um, And you'll see that seems to pretty much be the consensus um, in all of these stories. Um, Yeah, I don't like clowns. And some people are going to go back in my personal Instagram and they're going to pull up pictures of me. I had to be a clown. So when I, for those of you that don't know, I used to be a ballet dancer um, and I was with Milwaukee Ballet in their second company for about a year and a half. I loved it there. They're absolutely amazing. If you live in that area, please support them because they are a fantastic, fantastic company. Um, but during their Nutcracker, we have what we call the Jacks. They're supposed to be like Jack in the Boxes, but they're basically clowns. And I was a clown for two years. And um, so you can go back in my Instagram and find pictures of me as a horrifying clown. And I hated it. Um, I loved doing Jax. Jax is a really fun number and you kind of get free reign of like acting choices and uh, you get to just have a lot of fun with it. But I didn't like being a clown because I knew that I was scaring people, but it did make me feel more comfortable with clowns because I was like, oh, now that I know that not every clown likes being a clown, I think I can be a little bit more comfortable with the idea of them. Anyway, that was a long tangent. Um, feel free to go. Or if you look on um, Milwaukee Ballet social media, 
Uh, they still use pictures of me from when I from when I was a Jack uh, on some of their posts. They did it this past year. Um, so you can go back and find pictures of me as a clown and uh, just enjoy the terrifying faces that I made for a living for like two years. Um, so let's get into the first uh, case. This is actually a cold case. Um, I It's kind of known as like the Warren clown case. Um, and what's interesting about this one is that we'll get into it a little bit later as we talk about it, but um, this is still going on today. Like, this case is still, like, a big deal. People are still trying to figure out what happened with it. Like, it's not a closed case. Um, so on May 26th, 1990, at about 10.45 a.m. in Wellington, Wellington Florida, um, a clown with a bouquet of red and white flowers and two balloons, one of which... I believe had a picture of Snow White on it, like Disney's Snow White. I believe there was a picture of her on one of the balloons. Um, I read that on some of the accounts of it, but some of them didn't have that. So that's why, you know, I think it adds, it paints a little picture. Um, comes to Marlene Warren's door and knocks on the door. When she answers, the clown shoots her point blank in the face and Warren died about two days later in the hospital from injuries from the gunshot. The clown then calmly got back in a white Chrysler LeBaron and drove away and was never caught. Um, so my first thing is like, she got shot point blank in the face and held on for two days. That's impressive to say the least. Like, I think that's extremely, like that shows a lot of grit. This woman was like, no. I'm not gonna let this clown kill me. I mean, eventually she did. But like, she fought for two days after being shot in the face. That is a badass woman. I love her. Um, also, side note, I normally do this at the beginning of the episode and I kind of forgot. Um, this does have some pretty graphic stuff in it. Um, I normally give like a disclaimer for like younger viewers and stuff. Um, and I already just talked about someone getting shot in the face. I don't think anything in this episode is going to be too gruesome or horrible, but there is, like, a little bit of, like, molestation. Um, there's a little bit of murder. There's a little bit of kind of everything. So if any of those things are triggers for you, please, please, please don't listen. But I think overall, this is a pretty chill episode. I don't think it's going to be anything that anybody's going to, like, be scarred forever over. Um, so anyway, back to it. Um, obviously their first suspect in the case was the husband because that's always who you suspect. Um, his name is Michael Warren, um, and there was no evidence that they found that tied him to the murder. They found, like, a suspected affair that was happening with him, um, and a, uh, co-worker of his named Sheila Keen. Um, and also, uh, they had a five-figure life insurance policy. So it was a little bit suspicious, but, like, overall, there was no, like, hard... It was all, like, circumstantial. There wasn't, like, any, like, hard evidence that kind of linked him to the thing. There was a little bit more evidence that linked Keen to the case, um, where, like, people that were like, yeah, this is where the costume was rented from. Yeah, we saw a woman. They kind of looked the same, but, like, I don't remember. Like, there was more stuff like that for Keen, um, but overall, there still wasn't enough evidence to sort of link anything. So the case ended up going cold, um, neither ended up getting charged with the murder, but then new evidence started to surface in 2014 that ended up placing, uh, Sheila Keen's DNA at the scene of the crime. Um, people started digging stuff up and they figured all this out. Um, on top of all of this, her and, uh, Michael Warren are now married as of 2002, which makes the motive for her murdering his former wife because of an affair much, much, much more valid it makes it seem way more like visceral like it makes so much more sense um the case has reopened as of 2020 like very recently um but we're not really sure with uh, covid and um everything that's going on with that when they're gonna pursue the case any further but at one point she was um going to get the death penalty if they found her guilty um, and then they were like, we're not going to pursue that because that's a little extreme. But she is being charged with like first degree murder, I believe. Um, but this is open as of 2020, y'all. That's been, what, 30 years since 1990? And they're just now like charging Sheila Keen with the murder. And like, that's crazy to me. 
that is so wild that it took 30 years for them to be like, it was obviously the woman that he was sleeping with. Like, of course it was. Like, of course it was the woman he was sleeping with. But like, it's you, if you don't have any evidence, there's nothing you can do. It's, oh, it's the Carol Baskin syndrome. For those of you that haven't watched Tiger King, what are you doing with your life? I'm normally not one of those people that likes to hop on board with like the show trends. Like people were really big into, um, like people right now are really big into watching like Avatar and they're like, I love it. It's so great. And it's like, I watched that when it came out like eight years ago. Like I'm one of those people where I like the things I like. I don't need like a trend to sort of make me enjoy it. Um, but Tiger King is one that you should definitely go look out. And Carol Baskin definitely fed her husband to Tiger. She killed him. Like, there is so much evidence that is not really evidence, but, like, circumstantial that, like, points to her. But, like, you can't arrest her. You can't do anything about it. So it doesn't matter. So whether or not you know the truth, like, that means jack shit in a court of law. I think, like, this was a case of, like, Carol Baskin syndrome, where, like, she definitely killed her, and everybody knew that she definitely killed her, but nobody could, like, pinpoint it with evidence, and therefore... She couldn't get arrested until now, which is very exciting. So we love a cold case that is no longer cold. We love that sort of stuff. It's wonderful. Um, that's the end of that one. Moving on to number two. This is um, actually like a... So I labeled each of these as like a cold case or like, you know, um, a serial killer or like whatever. Um, this one is like a trend. I don't know. For those of you that are around my age um, and older, you'll remember in 2014... This, like, clown fever sort of, like, swept the U.S. Um, and, like, Europe. And it was all over the place. A lot in France. A lot in London. Um, these, like, people that would put on these, like, clown costumes. Um, but it, the trend sort of started in California, from what I understand, from what I was reading. Um, in 2014, um, in Waysco and Baskerfield, California, was where this clown fever really, like, picked up the pace. This couple posted a photo of themselves dressed up as clowns for this, like, Halloween art project that they had been, like, working on for about a year. Um, basically, it was them dressed up as clowns at, like, different, uh, Waysco, Wasco, sorry, I'm gonna say that wrong, um, and Baskerville landmarks, like, places that were really important to the town. They took these pictures as this creepy clown, and you can look it up, like, if you look up the Wasco clown, you'll find it, and it's so scary, like... I was in broad daylight researching this the other day, broad daylight, middle of the day, writing in my notebook and was like sweating and like looking around behind me. I was like, it's going to be there. Like it, it really freaked me out. Um, basically, they posed around the city and posted a picture. And then all these copycats were like, oh, this would be a funny trend because, you know, frat boys exist. So they decided to come at me. Frat boys are awful. Don't, don't fight me on that one. Um, these copycats took to the streets, but they were sort of, like, armed. Like, they would chase people with a knife, or, like, some of them even had guns or baseball bats. Or, like, there was a case of someone getting chased around with, like, a chainsaw. Like, just stuff like that that, like, they're doing as a prank, but it's not really a prank anymore. Like, it's actually scary. Um, and this was popping up, like, mostly in this area, but the, the fever sort of spread all over. People were dressing up as clowns and following people home or standing on the side of the road and waving to people, like, stuff like that. Um, it ended up terrorizing the town, um, and they had a bunch of different social media accounts that were linked to the Wasco clown, um, and they would post things all the time being like, come out and play, like, why are you not you know, meet, meet me here and I'll give you a balloon, like, stuff like that. Um, they ended up arresting a 14-year-old boy um, because he was chasing other kids his age in a clown costume. Um, and he claimed that he wasn't going to hurt anyone and he wasn't armed. He was like, I was just trying to participate in this, like, clown prank that I saw online. I was just trying to participate. I wasn't going to hurt anyone, I promise. Which, like, he didn't have a weapon, but, like, you can still hurt someone with your bare hands, you know? And that's very threatening, and I totally understand why they'd be like, what the fuck were you doing? Um, on top of this, the clown made, like, a lot of social media call-outs to the police. Um, they would type things that were, like, come out and play with a picture, or when the kid got arrested, um, they made a post that said, it's funny you guys think I got arrested, with a post of the clown, like, at, like, a, I think it was, like, a, 
stop sign, maybe? He was out and about. Um, there were no other suspects arrested. And then this fever kind of like died down. Um, they ended up deleting a bunch of accounts that were linked to the clown, except for like, I think one of them is still, one of them still exists. Um, but they deleted most of the ones that went up there and like blocked them and whatever. Um, but the clown fever has since then kind of like diminished. Um, but it's still one of those things like when you look back at in history, you're like, why was this a thing? Like who, what person in the right mind is like, I'm going to go chase someone in a clown costume with a knife. Like I'm sure, oh my God, I know, I, I actually know a couple of people that would probably do that when they were that age, like early twenties. I know people that would 100% do that. I just don't, I don't see the appeal, but you know. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about, this is number three, for those of you counting at home, um, is Wrinkles the Clown. Uh, this is actually a documentary. So if what I'm saying about this interests you, I'm not going to talk like in too much detail about it, um, simply because it it is a documentary. Um, it's on Netflix. You can go find it. My dad and I stumbled upon it because we were trying to, my dad and I love watching like bad horror movies. And that's what we thought it was. And then as we started to get into it, we were like, oh, no, this is real. This is like a documentary. Like, this is a real thing that exists in the world. Um, it's horrifying. It's really scary. It's not something that I want to see every day, ever. Um, but all of this kind of started with this YouTube video that went up in 2015 that went viral. Um where there's a clown. I'm sure you've seen it because I, I saw the video and was like, I remember seeing this when it came out. Um, there's this clown that sort of comes out from under this young girl's like trundle bed when she's sleeping and like gets up and like stares at her. And it's like a found footage, like um, paranormal activity sort of style video. Um, and then there were a bunch of other videos that started to pop up of him like scaring kids you know, waving at people while they were driving on the road at night or like coming up to people's homes and like knocking on the door. Um, and it's all about like this supposed like old homeless man that like hires himself out to scare misbehaving children. So it's a way of like getting your kids to like behave is you're like, do you want wrinkles to show up? And like you can look up pictures of wrinkles and you'll see like he's not he's not meant to be a friendly looking clown. Um, there are cases where, like, when you look back at, like, you know, like, Stephen King's It, that's a really popular thing. Um, part of the reason why I didn't really enjoy, and this is, you know, not the most popular opinion, but part of the reason I didn't enjoy his, uh, redesign in the new movies was because he wasn't enticing enough. He looked really spooky, which is great for a horror movie, but part of the draw of the original Pennywise was that, especially Tim Curry is such a dopey looking dude. Um, and the makeup looked dopey. It looked like he was trying to have fun and like allure, not allure, lure in children. Um, it, Wrinkles is very clearly meant to be a scary fucking clown. Like he's horrifying looking and that's the purpose. Um, he keeps his identity hidden um, throughout the documentary. It's not, you don't know who he is. Um, he talks and he explains things, but it's not, you don't know who he is. Um, this all takes place in Naples, Florida. And I wrote, uh, in my notes, California and Florida have lots of clowns, I guess. Um, <laughs> I guess that's just like a thing. Also Chicago. For some reason, it's like those three places, like Illinois, Florida, and California, those three states, like, have so many clown stories from them, and I, I don't know what's going on in those states. Like, I don't know what clown hurt them when they were a kid that made them do these things, but, like, it really is a huge thing in those areas. Um, but, uh, again, like, a couple more videos ended up surfacing, um, and then they made the documentary, which was released in 2019. Um, it does keep his identity a secret, but it sort of reveals, like, his motives and reasoning behind creating wrinkles as a character um and it's all kind of part of this weird like complex art project that this person is doing i didn't watch the full truth be told i didn't watch the full documentary shoot me um it was a little boring and my dad and i not boring 
I wasn't in the right like mindset to watch a documentary. We wanted to watch something that we could like laugh at. And that was way more like interesting and brought up a lot of like moral questions about like parenting and like what is considered like a corporal punishment for your child. Like, is this helping them learn morals? Is this not? Is this, you know, abuse of your child? Is this mental abuse? Is it not? Like, it sort of brought up a lot of like stuff like that. And I was like, I don't have the brain power to do this today. I had surgery like a week ago. Like, I <laughs> I can't do this right now. Um, but you should go take a look at it. It was really fascinating. I want to get into watching it. Um, probably in the next couple days, I'll end up watching it. The next thing I want to talk about is a disclaimer. I want this to be a future episode. If you would like to hear a future episode about this next person, story, it's a serial killer. I think you can all guess uh, who I'm going to talk about next. Especially when clowns come up and you think of scary things, his name always pops up. Um, and I want to do a future episode that's just about him, so I'm going to give some basic information here. But it's going to be cut kind of short because I want to make sure that I still have um, interesting new info for all of you, uh, the next time I do an episode. So this is about Pogo the Clown, otherwise known as John Wayne Gacy. He was a serial killer that lived in Illinois. Um, he tortured, raped, and murdered about 33 boys, probably more. Um, and he did all of this from about 1972 to 1978 in deploy De Plain, Illinois, which I believe is close to Chicago. If I'm incorrect about that, I'm really sorry, but I think it's close to Chicago. Um, in prison, Gacy ended up painting uh, tons of portraits of him as Pogo the Clown, um, and then a lot of them got purchased and burned in this big bonfire that was attended by the victim's families. Um, I'm specifically talking about the clown version of him. He was, like, an upstanding person in the community and was, like, people loved him. And he had, like, I think two wives and they got divorced because he was, like, I'm gay. And he had har a hard time coming to terms with that and um, all sorts of stuff like that. But he was, like, a person that people really liked. Like, nobody suspected that he could have been this terrible, awful person. Kind of like Bundy. If we all remember, that's going to be a future episode, too. I got to get into that. Um, two killers that we think of when we think of serial killers are John Wayne Gacy and Ted Bundy. Um, Ted Bundy has like the Bundy tapes came out. They also have that movie with Zac Efron, which is fantastic. I can never remember the name. It's like extremely vile, totally wicked and something like that. It's long. I can never remember it. Um, fantastic film. Um, I would say watch the tapes first and then watch the movie because then Zac Efron's performance makes a lot more sense. He has all of the same acting beats down. Um, he has everything completely, like, down to, like, the minuscule detail of what Ted Bundy did. It's really great. Um, but those sort of characters, those two people, you know, Bundy and Gacy, were normal people. They seemed like normal guys that could never do this thing. And then once it came out and it came to light, that, and they admitted to it, they were like, this is what happened. It was very shocking, and I think that's why their names are so ingrained in people's minds. Because what they had done was so horrible, and they had done it for so long, and to so many people, and no one had any idea. Like, with Dahmer, he was a weird guy. Like, yes, like, I probably would have been victim number, like, 20 or whatever, because I think he was really attractive. Sue me. Um, but I feel like people would have expected him to do something off and weird. Like, his neighbors were like, his apartment smells funny, and, like... He always had these weird excuses with, like, tropical fish and whatever. But, like, these two guys seemed normal. Had houses, had had kids. Like, uh, don't quote me on that. I know Bundy was, like, a stepdad. I don't know if he ever had any biological kids. And then I don't know if Gacy had any kids with any of his wives. So don't quote me on that. But they were, like, family men. Well-rounded people, whatever. Um, so I think that was part of the reason why he's such a popular person. But specifically, part of the reason he became, th that was a really roundabout way of getting to this point, part of the reason he was so, like, revered in the community was because he had this persona named Pogo the Clown, um, and Pogo was really popular at, like, kids' birthday parties, he often volunteered at the children's hospital as Pogo the Clown, um, he loved this persona, but what's interesting to note, um, I watched a documentary about this recently, um, what's really interesting to note about the way that he painted his face 
was that normally when you're a clown and you're trying to make kids feel comfortable or make them laugh or whatever, you draw soft lines. You use circles, round shapes, because that makes them feel more comfortable. If you use angular lines, it makes people a little more wary of you. You have a sharper look to you. But what's interesting is that Gacy painted his face very angularly. Everything is very sharp. All the lines are very... You can look up a picture. Um, all the lines are very precise and sharp, which is not normally how you would paint for children. Maybe for like a stage performance, if you're like a circus performer. But for the most part, when you're a clown trying to you know, entice a kid, make them feel comfortable. You don't paint sharp lines because that's going to make them feel more wary of you. Um, but he chose this specifically and was like, this is Pogo's aesthetic and like, this is his, you know, personality and I want that to shine through and blah, 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 which I think is a red alert that this man is dressing up like a clown and boys are going, anyway, I know that that's like rude to suspect, but like this man who divorced his wife because he was gay dresses up as a clown and comes to your kid's birthday parties. Young boys are going missing. He likes to be a clown that's dark and creepy looking. I don't know. Seems pretty suspect, but whatever. I'm not a police officer, so. Um, the last one that we're going to talk about, this is the last one, five, um, is Klutzo the Clown. Uh, I wrote Pervert. That was the only thing I wrote next to it. This one's kind of a gross story. Um, but it does bring up a lot of, like, moral stuff at the end of it, which is why I wanted to end with it, because I want to talk about that for a little bit. Um, Paul, Carlock, John, nope, there's no John. Paul Carlock Jr., I have terrible handwriting, I'm so sorry. Um, former cop and now minister, um, used to perform as Klutzo the Clown for children, um, and he called himself, like, a, a Christian clown which I think is already just not it. Like, that already is like a red flag to me. Like, a Christian clown, those are two things I don't want together. Because that, you're waiting for like some sort of possession, demonic thing to happen when you say a Christian clown. Like, there's no way that that was, there's no way that that didn't create a poltergeist, you know? personally i don't think there's any way that that couldn't have created a poltergeist in some form um in october of 20 whoa 27 i'm am i okay in october of 2007 he was arrested for child pornography and traveling to engage in sexual misconduct with a minor um he ended up traveling to the philippines a lot where they ended up finding a bunch of photos that he had taken of these naked boys that were playing and showering there were a couple photos of the boys where they were fully clothed but what, like when they were sitting or something you could see their genitals like through their pant leg or like their genitals were like visible but like they were still in clothing sort of scenario um he used to travel to the philippines all the time with klutzo to sort of like do, I don't know, Christian work for the orphanage there. Um, the orphanage was called House of Joy that he used to work at. Um, he ended up claiming that this was because they were so poor that they couldn't afford clothes. He came up with this like bullshit excuse that like he was going to Photoshop out, you know, all their junk and stuff because he just wanted to make sure that people could see what poverty looked like. Like it wasn't about the porn at all. It was just about making sure that he could show that they have it so much better in their country than they do in other places and blah, 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 blah. You know, creepy priest dancer, creepy priest dancer. Um, three boys at the House of Joy claimed that they had once woken up to Carlock fondling them. Um, and at least 21 child pornography videos were found in his home when they ended up doing a home search. And that's when they were like, your excuse no longer matters because we found kitty porn uh, in your house. So, um, you gotta go, buddy. Uh, he ended up dying before his trial after only spending 39 days in jail. So he never was, like, convict. technically, like, he never went to jail for what he did, technically. He was awaiting trial for 39 days and died. Um, people think that either the guards or the nurses might have, like, killed him on purpose um there's a lot of stuff coming up that's like well he had 
all of these health conditions that his needs weren't met and they were purposefully doing this thing to him to, you know, make him sicker and nobody was taking care of him and the guards used to use like over overexerted force on him. But then like the jail has come back with reports that's like, well, they haven't done anything illegal and like, you know, excessive force was not used. But even if it had like, he was the one that was instigating everything and it was his fault for like, you know, uh, I guess like triggering the guards or like forcing the guards hand on him. Um, and I know right now this is sort of like a sensitive topic given like all the ACAB stuff and, um, you know, police brutality and things like that. Um, and I agree with all of that. I think it's all 100% accurate. And so this case was very interesting to me as I was reading it, just seeing like, sort of like he had these underlying health conditions, but then like supposedly was like really, really rude to everyone there. And so they were like, then it comes into this moral question of like, if he's a bad person, do you still let him die or... Do you let him get, you know, everybody's subject to due process and, you know, making sure they know their rights and whatever. And like technically his rights weren't met because he wasn't getting medical attention that he was supposedly supposed to get. And he was getting, you know, excessive force and, you know, whatever. But also he was this bad person that like might have raped and molested a bunch of boys and we don't even know. But he had all this kitty porn. He was clearly like a pedophile and this bad guy. But like. Did, did he deserve to die that way? Like, it, it just brings up, like, a lot of questions. And then there were a bunch of lawsuits coming up that were like, well, you didn't give him his rights. And they're like, but we did. Like, we tried. But then, like, all this stuff came up that he didn't get proper medical care. Like, baseline, he didn't get the medical care that he needed for his underlying health conditions. Which, like, that is something that he needs. That's probably the main reason why he died there. But, like, are we really sad that he died? Like, why are we filing a lawsuit for him dying? Like, he should be an exception to the rule, in my opinion. Um, but I'm a very big... I guess I'm a very... And I've I've talked with this with people for a little while, so I don't normally like to get super political or, you know, aggressive like that on this podcast. I like to keep it sort of information-based and, you know, topic-based. But I'm one of those people where I, I firmly believe that the death penalty can be a really good thing. Um, I think that it's something that, while I do think that everybody's life is important and everybody's life matters, when it comes down to financially and for the safety of the people, especially in cases where, like, you know, do I think that this man should have died? No. Am I necessarily upset that he died? Also, no. Um... I'm colder than most in that respect, but, um, uh, Dan and I, m my boyfriend, for those of you that don't know, um, we were watching an episode of Law and Order maybe like a couple months ago, and there's this episode where this man is completely, like, insane, like, he doesn't recognize that what he did is wrong, he has voices in his head, and the doctors are like, even with medication, he's not gonna get better. They were like, great, put him in a mental facility, and I was like, I don't know if that's the best choice because what happens if he gets out and then he's going to murder like four people again? You know, it's like there's this idea of like, if they're beyond help, why keep them around? I guess that's me being kind of cynical. But in that case, I was like, why did he not get the death penalty? And Dan was like, well, he doesn't know that what he did was wrong. And I was like, but they said that he's never going to get better. Like they're on record. Like this man is not going to get better. And he's like, yeah, but so they're sending him to a mental facility. And I'm like, but that doesn't, he can get out. He's still alive. He's still around to wreak havoc. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It just, it brought up like a lot of points in my head that I was like, oh, I see where people would come from of like, well, fuck him. He's dead. Like he was a pedophile, but it's like, also he never got to trial. So who knows? Maybe he, that wasn't him. Maybe he did get framed. Maybe this was all, you know, a lie or whatever, or maybe he did do it. And then he died and that was his karmic debt. And, you know, it. he got his comeuppance. I love that word. He got his comeuppance. Um, but it's just something interesting to, like, think about, like, in your own time. Um, talking with people is always great. Having a discussion with people is always great. But also I think what's far more important is having your own beliefs and knowing, knowing your own beliefs and having enough information to support those. So... Before you go and talk to somebody about 
<laughs> things like this. Do your research. Make sure you know what you're talking about. Um, be intelligent. Um, and don't don't get heated. You know, that's one thing I have a hard time with is like I get passionate about the things that I believe and then I, I take emotion into the conversation. Um, and especially with topics like this that you should never do that. Um, that was really off course. I'm so sorry. For those of you that weren't here for my goddamn TED Talk, that was a lot. Um, on a funnier note, I wrote, clowns are scary. Please stop them. And then um, I want to start the hashtag, no clowns 2020. No clowns 2020. I'll repeat it one more time. Hashtag no clowns 2020. I don't want to see any more clown murders. I don't want to see any more clown movies. I don't want to see any more clown posters, clown makeup, clown. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want clowns. I want them to go. Um, clowns that are already in effect. We have Pennywise. We have one of my favorite people. Like we got Joker. We got Harley Quinn. You know, they can stay. They've been around. They're staples. No more new ones. I don't want any more new clowns. I don't want to, I don't want Clown Mageddon 2014 to resurface. I don't want Klutzo to make a reappearance. I don't want Pogo to make a reappearance. I especially don't want wrinkles to exist anymore. I want it all to die. I want it all gone. I want no more clowns. No clowns 2020. I'm very adamant about this. This is my campaign for presidency. No clowns 2020. That that That's it. This is my TED Talk. Um, <laughs> thank you for listening. Um, I'm going to plug social media and stuff again. So if you already heard this in your board, thanks for listening. Bye. Um, for those of you that are still going to listen, uh, I have an Instagram. It's whispers from below. Um, no spaces, no underscores, no capitals, no nothing. Um, I, I'm i going to get better about posting updates and stuff there. I have been kind of lackluster lately. I've had a lot going on um, in my life with moving and getting back to New York and a new setup and stuff like that. So it's been a little hectic here. But I am going to get back to that um, sort of like not daily, but like pretty regular updates on what's happening, posts throughout the week um, questionnaires, stuff like that. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, um, or you have any ideas for future episodes, please feel free to DM me there. I've had people reach out recently, um, and just say like, hey, we're thinking of you and, you know, with everything you're going through, um, for those of you that are more interested in that, you can check out my personal Instagram, which is at J-U-T-I-N underscore geese, G-E-E-S-E. -E. Um, you can go check out more there. There's a post about a recent tattoo I got. That's kind of where I explain everything. Um, if you're interested in my life at all, I've had people reach out that are like, we really care about you. You know, people have commented on posts saying, why don't you do an episode about this and stuff like that. Um, I have a big list of episode ideas that I want to do and I add them every time and I think about it and I love hearing back from you guys. Um, if you have any feedback of like, hey, you know, this you know, style worked for me. Like, I love when you do lists or like, I love when you do haunted places or I love when you do serial killers or mm, I didn't love this. I didn't love this. Um, that's also great to hear because the more I hear back from you guys, the more I can create content that you love that I love doing. Um, the more we have a conversation, the more everybody is happier and loves that. Um, I'm gonna try to take pictures in the prototype stuff. I just haven't done it yet. Because I'm lazy and my hair is busted right now. I tried to dye it and it doesn't look good. And I cut it weird and it's just, it's not it right now for pictures. But I'm going to get there and it's going to be cute and you're all going to love it. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. This comes out every Monday at 8 a.m. Um, you can listen to it pretty much anywhere now. I'm pretty sure it's on like every podcast platform possible. Um, but the easiest way to get it is like Spotify. I also upload it personally to YouTube. Um, so you can subscribe over there. It's, uh, whispers from below. It's the same thing on everything, which is really easy to find. Um, and remember clowns suck hashtag no clowns 2020. And please keep washing your hands and wear a mask and stay safe. Uh, we all want this to be over. <laughs>